and it's time for chapter 46 of the tale of Despero. This one is called Mouse Blood Yes. Interesting title. Okay. Despero stood at the top of the dungeon stairs and peered into the darkness and waited for that waited for him below. Sorry. Oh, he said, "Oh my." He had forgotten how dark the dark of the dungeon could be, and he had forgotten too its terrible smell. The stench of rats, the odor of suffering. But his heart was full of love for the princess, and his stomach was full of soup, full of cook soup, and Despero felt brave and strong. And so he began, immediately and without despair, the hard work of maneuvering the spool of thread down the narrow dungeon steps. Down, down, down went Despero tilling and the spool of thread. Slowly, oh so slowly they went, and the passage was dark, dark, dark. I will tell myself a story, said Despero. I will make some light. Let's see. It will begin this way. Once upon a time, yes, once upon a time, there was a mouse who was very, very small, exceptionally small, and there was a beautiful human princess whose name was Pete. And it was so happened that this mouse was the one who was selected by fate to serve the princess, to honor her, and to save her from the dungeon of that terrible dungeon. Sorry, to save her from the darkness of the terrible dungeon. This story cheered up Despero considerably. His eyes became accustomed to the gloom, and he moved down the stairs more quickly, more surely, whispering to himself the tale of a devious rat, and a fat serving girl, and a beautiful princess, and a brave mouse, and some soup, and a spool of red thread. It was a story, in fact, very similar to the one you are reading right now, and the telling of it gave Despero strength. He pushed the spool of thread with a great deal of gusto, and the thread, eager perhaps to begin its honorable task of aiding in, sa in the saving of a princess, leapt forward and away from the mouse, and went down the dungeon stairs ahead of him, without him. No, cried Despero, no, no, no. He broke into a trot, chasing the thread through the darkness. But the spool had a head start, and it was faster. It flew down the dungeon stairs, leaving Despero far behind. When it came to the end of the stairs, it rolled and rolled until, finally, lazily, it came to a stop right at the gnarled paw of a rat. What have we here? said the one-eared rat to the spool of thread. I will tell you what we have here, said Batisili Remarso, answering his own question. We have red bread. How delightful. Red thread means one thing to a rat. He puts his nose up in the air. He sniffed. He sniffed again. I smell. Could it be? Yes, most definitely it is. Soup. How strange. He sniffed some more, and I smell tears. Human tears. Delightful. And I also detect a smell. He put his nose high in the air and took a big whiff of flour and oil. Oh my. Oh my, what a cornipica of scents. But below it all, what do I smell? The blood of a mouse. Unmistakably mouse blood, yes. Ha ha ha, exactly, mouse. Batisile looked down at the spool of thread and smelled. He gave it a gentle paw with one push. Red thread, yes, exactly. Just when you think that life in the dungeon cannot get any better, a mouse arrives. Chapter 47. No Choice. Despero stood trembling on the steps. The thread was most definitely gone. He could not hear it. He could not see it. He should have tied it to himself when he had the chance. But now it was too late. Despero's dire situation suddenly became, became quite clear to him. He was a two-ounce mouse alone in a dark, twisting dungeon full of rats. He had nothing but a sewing ne needle with which to defend himself. He had to find a princess, and he had to save her once he found her. It's impossible, he said to the dungeon. I can't do it. He stood very still. I'll go back, he said. But he didn't move. I have to go back. He took a step backward. But I can't go back. I don't have a choice. I have no choice. He took one step forward, and then another. No choice. His heart beat up to him as he bent went down the stairs. No choice, no choice, no choice. 
At the bottom of the stairs, the rat Botticelli sat waiting, and when Despero stepped from the last stair onto the dungeon floor, Botticelli called out to him as if he were a long-lost friend. Ah, said Botticelli, there you are, exactly. I've been waiting for you. Despero saw the dark shape of a rat, the thing that he had feared and dreaded for so long, finally stepped out of the gloom and came to greet him. Welcome, welcome, said Botticelli. Despero put his paw on the needle. Ah, said Botticelli, you are armed. How charming. He put his paws up in the air. I surrender. Oh, yes, certainly. Exactly. I surrender. I, said Despero. Yes, said Botticelli, you. He took the locket from around his neck. He began to swing it back and forth. Please, go on. I don't want to hurt you, said Despero. I just need to get by you. I'm, I am on a quest. Really, said Botticelli. How extraordinary. A mouse on a quest. Back and forth, back and forth went the locket. A quest for what? A quest to save the princess. The princess, said Botticelli. The princess, the princess. Everything seems to be about the princess these days. The king's men were here down here searching for her, you know. They didn't find her. That goes without saying. But now a mouse has arrived, and he is on a quest to save the princess. Yes, said Despero. Took a step to the left of Botticelli. How inspiring, said Botticelli. He lazily took a step to his right, blocking Despero's way. Why hurry? Why the hurry, little friend? Because, said Despero, I have to. Yes, yes, you have said the said. You have to say. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes, you have to save the princess, exactly. But before you save her, you must find her, correct? Yes, said Despero. What if, but, said Botticelli, what if I told you that I know exactly where the princess is? What if I told you that I could take you right directly to her? Um, said Despero. His voice shook, his paws on the needle trembled. Why would you do that? Why would I do that? Why would I help you? Why, to be of service, to do my part for humanity, to aid in the serving of the princess. But you are a, a rat, supplied by the ceiling? Yes, I am a rat. And I see by your trem trem trembling that the greatly exaggerated rumors of her evil nature has reached your oversized ears. Yes, said Despero. If, said Botticelli, swinging the locket back and forth, if you allow me to be of assistance, you will be doing me a tremendous favor. Not only can I do a good deed for you and the princess, but my actions will help to dispel this terrible myth of evil that seems to surround rats everywhere. Will you let me assist you? Will you let me assist myself and my kind? Reader, was it a trick? Of course it was. Botticelli did not want to be of service. Far from it. You know what Botticelli wanted. He wanted others to suffer. Specifically, he wanted this small mouse to suffer. How best to do that? Why, take him right directly to what he wanted, the princess. Let him see what his heart desired. And then, and only then, faced with what he loved, Despero would die. And at the end of it all, how tasty the mouse would be seasoned with hope and tears and flour and oil and thwarted love. My name, little friend, is Botticelli Remorso, and you may trust me. You must trust me. Will you tell me your name? Despero, Despero Tilling. Despero Tilling, take your paw from your weapon. Come with me. Despero stared at him. Come, come, let go of your needle. Take hold of my tail. I will lead you to your princess, I promise. What reader in your experience is the promise of a rat? That's right. Zip, zero, not a goose eggs. But I must ask you this question too. What else was there for Despero to hold on to? He read again, nothing. And so the mouse reached out and took hold of the rat's tail. That's the end of chapter 47. Oh, Despero. So nervous. <laughs> Well, we'll continue next time. Bye.